I have a rule about being constructive, so I can't ask any questions right now because all of the questions that I have right now are rhetorical and they end with the word idiot. The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life, it's episode 390. We're into November now of 2024, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. That's right, and so many things we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. I want to start with a new feature. Best match I saw this week. Best match I saw this week was Crown Jewel Women's Tag Team Title Match. It sounds ridiculous to say that, but um, you should watch that match and watch specifically how good TJ Wilson and Molly Holly are at laying out matches. Uh, What's the best match you saw this week, Bell? Well, one, I would say I like that pick. I think this is like the second or third show in a row. They've done like a big multi women's match that has been pretty good. So, yeah, that lends credence to that. And again, the, the pickings are slim when it comes to good matches on Saudi shows. So for sure. Always nice when you see something that's even vaguely worth your time. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, amongst that, uh, I really, really like that Chad Gable Dragon Lee match on Raw on Monday. Ooh. So I think that was my favorite match. Like they just they hit each other really hard. There was chops and suplexes and fighting spirit and all of the uh it's like, oh man, Dragon Lee's been in this company for two years and they just don't let him do this very much. It'd be nicer if he did that on television more often. And obviously Chad Gable is very good, but you know, he's pigeonholed where he is. So yeah, they just let him go out there and hit each other hard and have a really, really good, kick-ass, fun, exciting match. All right. Well, that's what uh, that's the best matches we saw this week. Now let's talk about the news of the week. WWE, as mentioned, ran Crown Jewel in Saudi Arabia. The prestigious Crown Jewel titles are staying in Saudi Arabia, and the Crown Jewel champions will wear prestigious rings instead uh this is like the eighth try as we've mentioned on the show to uh, make these saudi shows worthwhile and prestigious uh main thing though roman reigns is bloodline lost to the uh team bloodline uh on this show in what could only be described as uh, a match that would put 1980s uh, that would make a 1980s wwf house show match look like uh, a G1 match in 2024. Hercules and Bundy are telling them to pick up the pace. Is what you're saying? <laughs> Holy crap! What was wrong with what happened? Like I don't expect. I don't know. <laughs> I don't expect a five star classic when Roman's in there. I expect a lot of talking and, right. and acting. But still, <laughs> six. Yeah, six guys. <laughs> yes, it's very hard to have a boring six man tag. Like, <laughs> yeah. What the hell? Because even if Roman doesn't want to do nothing, you'd think the other five guys could get something <laughs> worthwhile out of it, and then he could just come in and do his moves and his talking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it wasn't good. And then they did a very uh, telegraphed spot where for the first time ever in the 15 years he's been in WWE, Sammy tries to hit his kick on someone standing in the middle of the ring. <laughs> Yes. And uh, and uh, the guy ducks and he and, and he hits Roman and who was trying to run out and hit a Superman punch at the same time. I think they kind of overthought that spot a little bit. But uh, you know what? It's it's drama and it's it's bloodline city all over on both shows now because it involves Jey Uso and Sammy from Raw and of course uh, Jim Jim and uh, and Roman on Smackdown. So we just get to watch it on both shows every week uh, forever, I guess. Yeah, at least until the end of the of November when they do the Survivor Series War Games match, but this is building too. Uh, how do you feel about Sammy on the uh, Bloodline team instead of uh, Cody? I I guess that's fine. Um, I am. I guess I guess that leaves Cody to do a match with Owens or maybe a three way with Owens and Orton or something to keep those guys all busy. Um, I guess that's fine. It's another it's another. Another pape that Cody won't be made event in, but that's, uh, you know, that probably doesn't change his paycheck at all. So I, I don't know if he cares about that or not. But uh, yeah, I guess I guess that's fine. I mean, people probably care more about seeing Sammy join back 
with the bloodline than they would care about Cody doing a mega powers with Roman. Cause they already did that. And it was fine, but it didn't feel like that was like, I thought that would be like an earth shattering thing that they'd save for WrestleMania. And instead they just did it in October and it was immediately overshadowed because the rock came back. that night. <laughs> yes. Correct. Yeah. Um, so Running through the rest of the crown jewel show that uh, took place this past weekend, Seth Rollins beat Bronson Reed. Is Triple H a weak hearted coward for not uh, putting Bronson Reed over Seth Rollins? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. What was what's what's Seth getting out of this? He gonna he gonna take a run at Big Gunts? He got beat him up, so he's got to beat a big stinky giant first. He got splashed through the announce table by Bronson again on Raw. So I think we're just doing this again. <laughs> Beat the guy clean with your move, and then you just got to keep feeding with it. Great job, Paul. Generational cinema, as always. Weird, right? <laughs> Bald bitch. Um, oh. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I I thought the match was fine, and I think they've done... They do a good job of building... <laughs> of building Bronson up on everything, and then he just always ends up losing on, on the pape, so... Yeah. Uh, which is fine. You could, That's that's historically kind of always been the role of the giant in WWE, but uh, I guess, I guess we know that's, that's one of the lessons that Paul took for being under the learning tree uh, for all those years. We, we got to talk about the learning tree <laughs> in a moment. Uh, LA Knight, um, still the United States champion in a three way. It uh, was just, we wasted three months of SmackDown it is, my take away from this. They did a best of seven series that ended in a no contest. Really good parody booking, I thought. And yeah, it ended in a tie, and then LA just keeps the title. Mm-hmm. Okay, f- whatever. Lynn Morgan beat Nia Jax. Okay. Uh, <laughs> she gets her she gets her ring as as stated. Beautiful. She cried when she won. Very beautiful. She said this is so much bigger than her. That's right. That's right. Um does, yeah, she, does not, she know not... it's fake? <laughs> I'm not going to knock anyone's dreams because my dreams are very silly too. Sure. Right. I mean, would you cry if you started a podcast with Trish Stratus? I might. Okay. That's fine. I don't, that's I don't. A bad example. That. Bad example. <laughs> but uh, no, I look, it's fine that she won. I just. I... Would I cry if I started a podcast with Morgan? No. Fair. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. It was. It wasn't funny bad like I was hoping the match yeah. would be. Yeah. It was just there. So that yeah. was disappointing to me. I was kind of hoping it would be funny bad, but it wasn't. So yeah. We just keep the wheels on spinning. Yep. Cody and Gunther, uh interesting finish. And uh Cody Cody gets the win over Gunther. That seems like uh probably the right call, but why would you ever book a champion versus champion match that you didn't have to? <laughs> Right? Am I kidding? Yeah. Or at, <laughs> at the very least, you'd think like you do, you have Imperium run in, and then whoever Gunther's next challenger is comes out to, you know, even the odds, and Gunther's distracted, and Cody gets the win that way. But it's like, no, you just did the old Brett Piper finish, and there you go. Uh, I well, haven't seen that finish in a while, and I think it was a nice time to pull it out. Agreed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then they did a whole show of Gunther like shaking his hand and on Raw the next night he's talking about how Cody was the better man and I respect him and all this. It's like, are, are we tur- are we turning the fascist <laughs> baby face? <laughs> Quite the week to do it, huh? Uh-huh. What do you Synergy. know about that? Synergy. Yeah. So this brings up a, a bit a WWE. Uh, WWE item that that popped up on um, on Wednesday or Thursday this week, so they had their earnings call, and uh, TKO uh, overall was was down. They missed their revenue target by quite a bit. WWE revenue was way up. UFC revenue was down because they ran fewer events and some other reason. Regardless, whatever. So they do this the the quarterly investors call right, and it used to be a. Uh, uh, when uh, it was just WWE, like Vince would be on these and then he would he eventually would hand them off to Nick Khan uh, when he uh, lost his mind. <laughs> so. Mark Shapiro of 
uh, TKO and Ari Emanuel of TKO. Uh, usually do these calls now. Shapiro more than Ari, and occasionally Nick Khan still makes cameo on them. Anyway, regardless. Uh, Mark Shapiro this week on the call said, yeah, I had I had breakfast with Vince McMahon this week. He's doing great. <laughs> uh, he has some litigation he's trying to work through, but uh, he couldn't be more positive or happy about the direction of WWE. And it's like, am I crazy? Or was this a soft launch for a Vince TKO comeback? Well, uh, I don't know if anyone's seen the news this week. Yeah. But somebody else is about to be in charge of the Department of Justice. Yes. Uh, someone who happens to be very good friends with Vince and who's uh, Vince's wife at the time uh, <laughs> is on uh, is on his transition team. One of, one of like five people on the team. It's like her right. Vance, <laughs> yeah, the vice small... president pick, yeah, and the, the kids and one other guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think the chances of Vince McMahon seeing any sort of federal prosecution uh, went drastically far down over the last few days. Sure, and so I think I think we're gonna see him in public. Yeah. Uh, will he make an official comeback? I don't know. Dana White slapped his wife in front of like a hundred people on camera and kept his job. So just just ten months ago, yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know, why not bring him back? Nobody clearly nobody would care. <laughs> like, and if anything, the stock price might go up. So, uh, yeah, I think the idea that I I would think like maybe three months ago, the idea of publicly admitting that you've been hanging out with Vince McMahon on if if you're on the TKO board wouldn't have happened. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, this is yeah, this is the COO. <laughs> but the fact that you're talking about it and talking about how he's very happy with how things are going, um, I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Doesn't seem like something you were doing if you didn't have some plan. And hey, maybe they just they just want to bring him back as a, you know, to use his likeness for for things, for yes. toys and video games and look, turns out Vince McMahon is in a lot of WWE owned footage. I don't know if you're aware. So, <laughs> which they now have to like selectively edit and it's hard to talk about say, you know, to do endless a and E biographies and whatever about Steve Austin's career, for instance, if you can't ever reference Vince McMahon again. So correct. Correct. Uh, they need to be able to talk about him. Uh, and so this whether that was the intention here or not, feels like, hey, this is a little canary in the coal mine. Let's just say that we're we're chatting again and uh and just see see if everyone if everyone gets mad at us or not. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it makes my skin crawl, but it's, yeah, I, I think there's a, a decent chance he is, uh, is maybe on WWE television in the next year. It's, um, you know, the world keeps turning. I just, (laughs) very little surprises me anymore. I was still surprised. The, the the TKO COO this week said, "Yeah, I had breakfast with Vince the other week. He's doing great. Yeah, <laughs> he looks he looks rested. <laughs> like what? What are you talking it's about? Very positive. Oh, yes, yeah, so litigation he's working through. The litigation accusing him of sex trafficking. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh. that little snafu. Uh, anyway, that's one of the lawsuits. Remember." <laughs> There's also a ring boy scandal lawsuit. Uh, yes. Again, still, whatever. So, yes. Uh, multiple years lawsuits. Later. Yes. Multiple lawsuits he's working on right now. But yeah, when those are done and when the feds likely don't do anything uh, and his civil trials are over, he's uh, he's a new man. I and... mean, we could be looking at 10 years, though, like for all of that litigation to go away unless sure. these, unless people settle and the. I mean, he'll be mo- he'll be very motivated to settle, so maybe that does happen. Yeah, but... If he thinks he can get his <laughs> he can get his old his old office back, unreal. <laughs> There's nothing the old man loves more than tinkering with Monday Night Raw. That's right. I'm sure, he's still sending Paul uh, run sheets every week. Unbelievable. 
All right. Something that happened while we were not recording a show last week. Um, Baron Corbin, Indy Hartwell, Tegan Knox gone from WWE. These are uh, non renewals. Um, poss- most likely not releases, just non contract renewals, which is how, after all of the years of, of doing mass cuts and bad press, I think they finally have just decided. Uh, this is how we're going to do it now. We're just going to do what AEW does and not renew people. And so Baron Corbin, 40 years old. Um, Indy Hartwell, significantly younger. Tegan Knox, significantly younger. Uh, but those three are the uh, the three that are gone. And uh, any of those surprise you? I mean, Indy's been around on television recently. So that's probably the only one you could call even like surprising adjacent. Um, yeah. Just because you feel like, well, they need bodies when they do their 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 women's tag three ways and four ways every couple of months. Uh, but you know, you can they did they they did our uh, the, the NXT girls are they're up up now they're they're on the show they're on SmackDown now. Uh, which ones you talking? The uh, uh, Lash, 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 and Jakara. Yeah, Lash and Lani, I believe, were there. <laughs> <laughs> Lash Legend and Lani Donegan. Yeah, uh, Lash Legend and Jakara Jackson. It seems like they just soft launched them right to the main roster. Yes. So hey, there's there's another tag team. Uh, so yeah. we can get rid of one now, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel for feel for everybody, and Indy seemed especially well liked by everyone there. So I'm sure she'll have a chance to go back um, in a couple of years, maybe. And uh, but yeah, it's I mean, Corbin hadn't been on TV and like Corbin had a really weird like post Vince tenure. <laughs> yeah, they tried putting JBL with him mm-hmm. <laughs> as a manager. Well, JBL, which... by the way, who was clotheslining Marty Scurll in a ring this week. Yeah. JBL, How broke is he? <laughs> what is going on with this dude? <laughs> like, did he I... get another divorce or something? Yeah. That's what I was going to suggest is we, we need to do a deep dive on this and figure out if he got divorced. We'll, we'll report <laughs> back on the next show and see if we can yeah. figure out what's going on in JBL's personal life that has led him to need to be working GCW and random shindies that <laughs> book canceled wrestlers. Is He's not even like 45 and doing this, by the way. He's like 59 and doing yeah. this. He's... Like it, it's past the point where it's advisable to get back in the ring again. <laughs> yeah. He's been, he's been doing the stem cells. So he's just been running in and clotheslining guys, though. This hasn't mm-hmm. led to a match yet. <laughs> anyway, uh, hell Corbin. of a gig if you can get it, I guess. Yeah, Corbin. <laughs> but anyway, sorry. As sorry to hijack talking about people getting fired, but that, no, that JBL fine. thing is really. <laughs> It's really weird. It's really odd. Like to um, me, the only thing that that's going to be weirder is when Foley starts wrestling again in six months. He was talking about it last year, I believe. So, yep, it's, yep, it's not impossible. Um, no. So Corbin had a weird post Vince run. Yes. Uh, yes. Tegan Knox got rehired. It was like one of Triple H's make good rehires. Right. Unfortunately, Tegan has torn her ACLs three times. Yeah. And at 28 years old or whatever, I think Tegan Knox used to be really good. Uh, Regal was went to bat for her publicly when he was uh, in between jobs, I think. Um, Regal and I had the same exact taste in women's <laughs> wrestlers. Uh, Tegan, yeah, I thought was really good, but she's her body's just betrayed her. She's had three torn ACLs yeah. at the age of 28 or 29 or whatever and had a bad match with Becky Lynch on TV when Becky Lynch was having great matches with everyone on TV. Mm-hmm. And uh, Indy, as you mentioned, well-liked, still very young. Uh, Indy never really progressed to the point of being a passable wrestler, which is sad. And then the thing she had going for her was she had like an action figure physique, mm-hmm. and then she lost that. And uh, so that's sad. You hate to see it. Yeah. Like I said, I think she'll of the three. I think she has the best chance to get rehired. Well, yeah. if Vince comes back, maybe Corbin's back next year, too. Uh, Corbin's really tall. Yes. We need we need heaters, pal. Yeah. Um, But uh, yeah, I I think Indy might have the best chance to get back there someday if that's what she wants to do. But yeah. um, just because, again, she's she's a little younger and 
healthy at least. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I and people loved the NXT stuff with her and Dexter Loomis. That was like her heyday. Yes. <laughs> um, and then <laughs> they didn't really they kind of put that act together on <laughs> On main roster television, not really her and Dexter, but like they put her with Can with Aunt Candace and Yeah, and then Uncle they tried John. To, yeah, they tried to resolve it kinda. They did they did do a few things with, with Dexter once they once they rehired him. Oh, that's right. He sh- he like showed up and, and, and yeah. whatever. So they, they acknowledged it, but they didn't yeah. put her and him back together as a as an on screen duo permanently. So right. CM Puck's just devastated, by the way. Indy, <laughs> Indy got released. Is he not? Does he is he aware she doesn't play for his team? I guess that doesn't maybe that doesn't matter. It's just a law of averages game for that man. Yeah, I think he's just he just casts a wide net. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And it's like, well, you know, maybe someone's a little confused. <laughs> and he's happy to uh instruct them. Sure. Did um, you see CM Punk, by the way, posted a photo with his wife on Instagram on Halloween? I almost fell over. <laughs> it wasn't dated though. Of course. Like, not. There was there was no timestamp on the photo. No, no way. It could have been taken any time between 2015 and 2024. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. All right. We got, we got we need we need him and AJ to take a photo holding that day's newspaper. <laughs> yes, please do. Uh, what else we have WWE wise here? Uh, NXT ran at the 2300 arena this week. They did an ECW nostalgia show and it beat dynamite. I don't know, man. Rough, <laughs> rough for I mean, rough for dynamite. Um, yeah, I mean, we're uh, talking like 600,000 to 500,000, so I think news hurt everything this yeah. week. But uh, yeah, Bubba Ray and Devon and Rob Van Dam and Francine and Don Marie and L- Little Guido and Tony Mama Luke, we got the band back together for a nostalgia, right? Now, yeah, TNA yeah. superstar. Uh, Hall of Famer, TNA Hall of Famer, Rhino. Good for him. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. I mean, I I saw. I so they don't let RVD do nothing, huh? Looked like, that way. Yeah, the other they, company lets him wrestle. Yeah, they faked a, a beat down off off screen, and then yes. he comes out and he ducks a chair shot, but then doesn't do anything physical with uh, with what with old Wesley there. Yeah. Do you think that's a specific thing with him, or do you think they have an age uh, limit now? I mean, is little Guido that much younger than him? I was gonna say, <laughs> or Rhino? He's probably Guido. Little Guido is probably older, or, or, or the same age, mm-hmm. and looks in significantly worse physical shape than RBD does. True. Although little, little Guido still wrestles on Impact fairly often. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I noticed that too. They didn't let uh, they didn't let Devon uh, take no bumps. They didn't let Rob Van Dam do anything physical. Bubba Ray, though, they let him do a tag team match, and he looked absolutely terrible. <laughs> One thing we talked about this a little bit off the air that I must begrudgingly got to hand it to the terrorist group ISIL, aka Paul Levesque and Vince McMahon. Yeah, is that both of them over the last ten plus years have looked every time. Uh, old Bubba Ray has come sniffing around <laughs> their company. They have looked at him there. They have looked at Bully Ray and they've said, nope, you're Bubba Ray. You're going to put on your camo and your little glasses and you're going to put somebody through a table and you're going to do the 3D and that's it. You are and not stuttering your promos. That's right. You are not a super. You are not a main event guy. You are not a single star. You are Bubba Ray Dudley, the tag team wrestler, and you always will be when you step foot in this company. And I love that, personally. Yeah. You remember the last Dudley Boys run, I don't know, 2016, Mm 2017-ish in WWE? And uh, by the end of it, it was pretty clear that, like, Devon was about done. And there was Bubba Ray was trying to get his bully right singles thing going in wwe and they were just like nah no thanks you can go home <laughs> yeah i think he tells the story that like he he was like going in to pitch it to vince and vince is like i know about bully ray i'm not interested <laughs> <laughs> like, what else you got pal <laughs> which i think is incredible honestly <laughs> that's a that's fantastic a rare a rare win for the old man yeah that's fantastic 
Uh, wrapping up WWE news here. Bruce Pritchard and Michael Hayes are on leave. Which is code for depose, we think, maybe? I don't know. Uh, if I were going to need to be coached on giving testimony, I would probably want time off from work. Sure, sure. Yeah. You got to answer the door there? All right. So AEW continued their build to full gear this week. And I actually have not seen the show yet because I had to watch NXT for work and just haven't gotten around to it on the DVR yet. Uh, AEW Dynamite featured a very strange Malachi Black segment. <laughs> and uh, Malachi Black lo- uh, allowed Adam Cole to beat him and then uh, went on social media today and said, uh, you know, I don't know why anybody would think that uh, that would indicate that I'm leaving the company. I am. Uh, I just I am. I'm not going anywhere. It's like you are an attention who <laughs> he's so patent. Like, yes, he allowed himself to be beaten. He didn't get he didn't job. He allowed he simply stopped trying voluntarily. And yeah. and, uh, and then when and then when he was done, uh, yeah, he he like solemnly hugs adam cole and limps out of the ring and he then got annoyed that people uh thought that was him, him teasing an exit from the company again for the yes. thousandth time um, yeah so uh yeah i don't know man maybe maybe you should <laughs> i don't know maybe you should be uh you should do something more interesting then i don't know maybe people would have something else to talk about your matches other than is he trying to quit is he quiet quitting yeah um if you like had a good match or cut a good promo maybe people would talk about that instead of just you know the only thing interesting about you is whether or not you're gonna be here or in the wyatt six next you know exactly um so i've added a couple of things to pay-per-view bob lashley came in last week um Mm -hmm. which is a move fine in and of itself he's a recognizable guy debatable whether or not he's ever drawn a dime in this business but (laughs) he is a he's a guy and uh, he's gonna wrestle Swerve Strickland uh, at full gear Mercedes is wrestling Chris and uh, yeah Mox is wrestling uh, Orange Cassidy and uh, the Green Trouser Collective is still running wild all over Dynamite what did you think of the show this week just um, or can you please talk about dynamite this week since I didn't see it? <laughs> sure. Um, you know, I thought the there was less of the the Orange Cassidy and Friends versus Green Trouser Collective stuff. Um, which is it, weird given how hard they hit it last week. Yeah, I mean Orange and Darby have a tag match against Pac and Claudio that ends in run-ins and then they do a brawl and, and get laid out. And then the rest of the conglomeration guys come down and, you know, make the save. And that's kind of the last we see of them. So um, it, was, it was fine. It was, it was, it felt like we're, we're two or three weeks out from the pay-per-view and don't, don't really have a lot to do. And maybe with the, feels a little bit like it was a punch show, honestly feels like which is weird because they had very heavy competition both from news and from another wrestling company as mentioned one of those weird self the uh, self-fulfilling prophecy things like when right. wwe would go against the national championship basketball game and put steve austin on the show at eight o'clock yes <laughs> yeah that's kind of what it felt like so they you know they got the you know the big stuff out of the way early they did that was the first thing on the show was the mvp lashley uh shelton promo um to announce that match and then they did the adam cole match which we already kind of talked about wasn't good uh there it might end up being a three-way now (laughs) between mjf adam cole and roddy if if both adam and roddy win their win their matches sounds terrible so um i mean maybe at i i thought the adam buddy match was fine um for a guy who hadn't wrestled in 14 months or whatever yeah uh, I really thought this Malachi, they were just moving in slow motion. And I don't know if you blame Adam for that, for being not being quite up to snuff ring shape wise, or if you blame Malachi, you know, every, you know, I know he's talked, he's part of his video tirade was that he's healthy and he's been healthy. 
So I don't, I don't think you could blame injuries, at least according to the man himself. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It wasn't good, though. Um, and then, yeah, they did the, I guess the, the big highlight or the big thing coming out of the show is that Osprey's back on TV after being off selling the attack from the Don Callis family on the previous show. And Powerhouse Hobbs is back as a baby face. <laughs> and that guy is like coming for Kane and Big Show's babyface and heel swap record i swear um but yeah i mean babyface is still tall at the end of the show that was nice um yeah they're just they're along and then maybe they they did air a, they they aired a video package for okada going into the continental classic tournament next month noting that he is uh one tournament win away from breaking uh chono's record for the most wrestling right. tournament wins and so that is what he is so he's serious wrestler okada now he sounds like bullshit to me he's not funny guy who says bitch uh now right uh, the young bucks are gone for yeah. the time being great uh, jungle jack perry <laughs> is off doing his own thing so i guess we, it's just serious okada so uh we will revisit your previous question of is he washed or is he just not trying probably we'll get to answer that question pretty decisively over the next month i would say yeah. New Japan uh had a big press conference and announced the ma- the first uh six matches for uh Wrestle Kingdom 19 the Tokyo Dome and it's Zack Saber Jr against Shota Umino for the world title. Mhm. Look, uh Shota Umino I think the time to pull the trigger was years ago. Probably at the very least should have beaten Moxley for it earlier this year. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it might be too late, but hey, they're trying. Tanahashi versus Evil. Uh it's a no buys match. David Finlay against Yoda Suji. Uh they've slotted Suji at the mid card level, which is a mistake. I'm not saying that he should be main eventing shows, but look, you gotta try with someone under the age of forty at some point. <laughs> Uh, Doki against El Desperado. It's fine. Doki earned his spot. Desperado's yeah. Desperado's the second best junior heavyweight they have, so that's fine. Uh, Ren Rita defending the TV title against Jeff Cobb and Oiwa in a three way. Whatever, it's a three way. Uh, Kushida and Kevin Knight defending against uh, Ichiban Sweet Boys, Robbie Eagles and Kosei Fujita. Tremendous name. Yes, the Ichiban Sweet Boys. Uh, that's what uh, my dog and I call ourselves. <laughs> Archie and I are the Ichiban Sweet Boys. Uh, TJP and Francesco Akira, <laughs> Clark Connors, and Jerome Maloney <laughs> in a four way. We also have the first match for the joint show the next day, January 5th in the Tokyo Dome. The uh, number of Wrestle Dynasties will <laughs> continue to increase until morale improves. And Zack Sabre Jr. is wrestling Ricochet on that show. I, 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 I don't know. Maybe Sabre is uh, has become a giant star in Japan since they put the title on him. I don't know. It just seems strange to me that like, and I like Zack Sabre Jr. matches as a change of pace, mm. but uh, I just I, I don't know. I'm not super jazzed about Zack Sabre Jr. main eventing both nights at the Tokyo Dome. Yeah, Ricochet. Does this feel like the kind of the reverse of when New Japan came to America and they were like, we're going to main event with Billy Gunn and Cody because we need American stars. It's like we're, we got to pick an AEW guy that New Japan people have seen before. Maybe so. But again, why? And, and they're not going to let you beat Kenny or Okada or right. you know, Moxley. Jay White, Moxley, yeah. any of those guys. So when you get when you eliminate all of the top guys that new japan fans would know you are left with ricochet <laughs> maybe yeah. uh, that's yeah. that's the best uh, explanation for it it doesn't make for a p- particularly compelling match um but hey i mean I, I mean it could be a very good match in the ring just um we'll see yeah as a box office match it's lacking yeah um but obviously they're they've shot an angle for a gabe kid kenny omega something for yeah, that show that is maybe going to be Kenny's in ring return, which is kind of wild. I mean, it is a joint show, I guess, so you can say it's an AEW show, 
as well. But also, Kenny cut a promo on uh, on the New Japan show last weekend where he said that even though he's an AEW, he cut the Hogan in '93. Yes, the IWGP title is the only title for him. The New yes. Japan is the best, is the king of sports and the best promotion in the world. Even right. though he he's an executive vice president in another wrestling company right now. And let me just say that's the second coolest thing I've ever seen Kenny Omega do. Behind that time, he was really high on that dynamite because his <laughs> insides were exploding. <laughs> Which was, in fact, the coolest thing Kenny Omega has ever done. Yeah. <laughs> Remember he declaring him not a nerd because he yes. does drugs. I he said, did drugs. Because you were like, is Kenny, you were like texting me, he's like, is Kenny effed up? And I was like, right. oh, I think he's too much of a nerd to do drugs. I don't know. And then it was like a couple days later, it's like, yeah, his entire innards are, were exploding on him at the moment. He was very heavily medicated. I was like, oh, he is cool enough. <laughs> yeah. I was wrong. But hey, uh, Kenny will be back. That's good. Um, they had teased doing Kenny and Tanahashi versus the Bucks, and the Bucks sent in a promo for that that last New Japan show as well, saying they're wrestling on the show. But I guess they're not wrestling Tanahashi and Omega. So, they, yeah, we'll see. yeah, there are there are two days. Um, I don't know if they're doing a New Year Dash or not. Um, yeah, there are two days. It could happen. I don't know. True. Who cares? Yeah, as far as the actual Wrestle Kingdom show, the only thing the only thing I can figure is that they want the end of the show to be either you know they want their the the three the three blind mice but the three musketeers to all the be, three blind mice to all be champions <laughs> right that's that's going to be their that's their I feel like that's their angle for this show is it's Suji. too late though <laughs> oh it is but I think they're going to do it anyway I think Suji's winning I think Shota's winning and uh, the third fella yes. Uh, is uh, are all are all going to be the champs at the end of the show, and that'll be their their photo op to tell them that they're they finally built for the future. After yeah. not doing that expressly for the past uh, decade. Yeah, uh, Chris Bay got hurt um, last Sunday. Uh, sorry to hear that. We didn't do a show last week, so we didn't talk yeah. about this last week. But um. All right. Is there anything else that uh, you would like to get to from this week or last week that we haven't covered yet? No, I think about that about covers all the uh, all the big news of the week. Well, we've done it again, old man. <laughs> <laughs> Waving to the crowd, taking our victory lap, and uh, saying, "Until next time, I'm Ethan and I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Bye bye." Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. Well, well what do you want to talk about? <laughs> we live in Donald Trump's America again. How do you feel about that? Yeah. Kind of feels like we never left, does it? Because <laughs> you'd be like, well, at least he went away for four. No, he didn't really go away. He was kind of ever present the whole time he wasn't president. So that that, that is the media's fault, though. Like, oh, yeah, he's he, he's content. <laughs> well, that and like, you know, the Justice Department's fault for not, you know, for not putting him in jail, but. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair, I suppose. Um, it's, it's a lot of people's fault. <laughs> um, but hey. obviously, most importantly, it was it's 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 you know the left's fault. <laughs> As is always the lesson learned. Uh, if you watch MSNBC the day after the Democrats lose an election, well, M- MSNBC is saying that uh, the problem is that Hispanic men, um, again, I thought we'd rejected that term. <laughs> uh, you tried Latinx ago. for a couple of, uh, couple of election yeah. cycles, and now we're back to Hispanic, I guess. Yeah, but uh, so I apologize if I'm using the wrong uh, term here, but <laughs> his, like 54% of Hispanic men voted for Mm-hmm. Trump. 
that is uh that's a significant percentage. It is. However, <laughs> however, what do you how do you you know? But if you look up what that evens out to uh <laughs> amongst the entire electorate, that is not why <laughs> he won. Well why why did he win? Um well I mean it's not a trick question, I don't know. No, I mean I mean, the biggest macro reason I think you can look at it is, and this is backed up by the fact that despite him having the most successful win of his three runs at presidents, arguably by winning the popular vote and the electoral college handily, uh, he received several million fewer votes than he did last time (laughs) in 2020 when he lost. Uh, So a lot of people sat this one out. Um, which is probably a greater reason why uh, Democrats lost uh, than um, anyone. You know, a lot of a lot of people that came out in 2020 to vote against Donald Trump did not come out to vote for Kamala Harris this time. Maybe some of them voted for Trump, but overall, a lot less people voted, and you know, that's. Generally, that's the ticket for Republicans winning elections in the last couple of uh, decades is the less people that vote, the more they tend to win. So, um, yeah, I mean, you can you can Monday morning quarterback strategies and, you know, should she have picked someone else for BP? Should she have, you know, campaigned on something besides just not being Donald Trump or Joe Biden, uh, you know, there's there's conversations to be had there, I suppose. But uh, I don't know. Could be any number of a thousand things, I get. I going to say, so what's the left's takeaway from this? Um, well, I think you can look at the, 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 the point well made, how well he did with Latinos, working class, people making less than $50,000 a year, for instance. Um, we're all uh, people that had a very strong coalition. Uh, Bernie Sanders had a very strong coalition with all those groups by chance. Uh, so I think people want you to offer them tangible things hmm. in exchange <laughs> for their vote. <laughs> and I Makes. think I think the Bi- Biden over time and like you can point to things you can point to the infrastructure bill and you know how pro labor he was there's lots of things you could point to where you could say like hey there are things that tangibly got better under his administration but at the same time a lot of people one they're just looking they're looking at their wallets i mean we talked about this offline it's you're looking at your wallet you're looking at things are, things are more expensive than they were four years ago my my wages have not gone up uh, so either, like I said, some people stayed home, some people voted for the other guy. So it's, I think it, it's, it's almost unknowable. <laughs> like the, the, the median American voter is almost unknowable. Uh, sure. you know, Donald Trump won the, the district that Rashida Tlaib won in a landslide. Like, 70% of the vote. <laughs> yeah. Real me that one, <laughs> Batman, like. It's like it's not the, you know, red, red, very red states passed abortion, uh, you know, uh, protections, laws, protections yeah. minimum wage increases. Yeah. Like, so it's it looks like it, you can't go. This was like a full throated rejection of policy. Uh, but at the same time. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I but also a lot of people don't seem to vote on policy. They seem to vote on vibes. Vibes. And again, <laughs> just the basic of cost of living up. I'm not making any more money. Uh it's harder to afford to live now. So I will vote for the other guy. Or I am black pilled enough that I won't vote for anyone. Like. Right. And yeah, and yeah, other I'm sure there's other other things at play. You know, she but I think the the deep unpopularity of the Biden administration 
was going to be hard to shake off. And the fact that you didn't do a primary and you tried to hide from the world, a man whose brain was clearly melting for the first six months of this year. Yeah. So that you didn't have to do a primary. Um, yeah. A lot of, a lot of blame to go around, I guess. So. Policy wise, I, I like you said, I don't think people vote on policy for the most part, but I couldn't tell you one of Kamala's policies. I could tell you a lot of bad Trump policies. Mm-hmm. I don't think I could tell you one Kamala policy. That's a failure on their communications team. Totally agree. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> um, when you're again, and that makes it worse than when you're when you're point blank asked what's going to be different. And you right. don't really have an answer other than right. I'm going to make friends with Liz Cheney and Mark Cuban. Like, <laughs> um, I mean, that's, that's a whole other part of how they spent yet another Time. cycle trying to appeal to voters. Who did. It was like in 2020, 96% of Republicans or 94% of Republicans voted for Trump. Uh, 6% voted for Biden. And this election cycle, 94% of Republicans voted for Trump and 5% of Republicans voted for Kamala Harris. So right. uh, for all the running to the center, for all the big, like she kept, she had some line about the military she used in like every speech, like lethal fighting force or something like, like the GI Joes. Right. And like, it was very clear that like she was really trying to appeal to all of that. And so maybe that's why, you know, she had a tax plan, but I don't think anybody heard about it. Yeah, I had no um, idea what it was. <laughs> um, so it's like, yeah, it's they thought they could cater to cent- center right, the mythical center right, and yes. that that would be a better deal than trying to. And again, to 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 if you went the other way, if you broke left, quote unquote, that would mean breaking with the guy and you're still technically his vice president for another six months. So like it was a pickle. They, they were in a pickle from the start. I don't know if there was a winnable way (laughs) forward. Once he decided he wasn't leaving. once, once Joe said, I ain't leaving until he did. Like, I I don't know if there was a way they could have won this, but uh, yeah, not, not, not de- illustrating any ways that you would tangibly make people's lives better. Probably a mistake at, at some level. Yeah, that's fair. As a, um, I would probably describe myself uh, as a mythical centrist. <laughs> center, center left, maybe. I don't sure. know, mythical centrist. But I ask this as someone who probably has uh, not as... Um, uh, uh, his views are not are as extreme as anyone's. Mm-hmm. Um, am I crazy to think that the world will be safer in terms of what's going on in Israel and Palestine, in terms of what's going on in Iran, in terms of what could be going on in Syria and what's going on in the Ukraine and Russia? Am I crazy to think the world is going to be safer with the big dumb orange guy in there? Safer for for who? I guess. I is he going to stop Israel from doing genocide? No, he and, wants and, to give and, them more weapons and He's ethnic just... cleansing. No, is he going to use uh, military the threat of military power to try to get some of these wackos in line? No, he wants to give Netanyahu more weapons. That was All that right. was his whole run. He he's a better well, threat to right. Israel than Biden. All right. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, he'll, (laughs) he'll, he'll talk a big game. Um, every, every Republican chief of staff and secretary of state has wanted to start a war with Iran since like 1980. So maybe we'll finally get in there, start tinkering around. Oh, sounds bad. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, to, to, you know, to Trump's credit, John Bolton really wanted to go into Iran in during his first administration. And he resisted that siren. That siren song. What? So, I hate John Bolton. By the way, oh, he's awful. He should be in jail probably for something. I hate him specifically. <laughs> yeah. I All hate right. Any of these ghouls that now have cushy pundit jobs who sat by and 
you know, and then got rich writing books about how they were secretly, you know, part of the resistance. There's nine different guys who were secretly the only one telling Trump (laughs) no or preventing him from starting World War Three. Right. Yeah. So I was watching the news tonight Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, whatever the wife has. uh, My wife has uh, CBS Evening News on Mm -hmm. and uh, 40 monkeys broke out of a of a research facility in South Carolina and police have warned residents to secure all of their doors and windows because 40 monkeys have escaped a research facility in South Carolina in a mass breakout. Who have we secured the banana trees? <laughs> the famous South Carolina banana trees. Any tire swings in the area need to be <laughs> bolted down. <laughs> Taken out of the tree, untied. Tell you what, it was nice to see monkey joke. (laughs) I try to keep on keeping on.